Hey Vs, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we're making something I am really excited about. This is a transfer resistant cream foundation. I own other long wearing foundations and concealers from brands like Makeup Forever and Tarte, but I wanted something that I could put in a pan and put it in a magnetic palette for easy travel and application. Most transfer resistant or waterproof foundation and concealer formulations are liquid. They're based around ingredients like water, cyclomethicone, isodotacane, ingredients that will evaporate quickly and then film formers like trimethyl siloxy silicate and acrylates copolymer. You can learn more about these ingredients in the color cosmetics section of the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. Anywho, because these formulations are designed to dry on your skin, they will also dry out if you put them in a pan and throw them in a magnetic palette. This formulation was born out of a formulation I shared back in 2020 and some ingredient research that I did last year. The cream foundation was my second skin cream foundation, which was inspired by RCMA's classic cream foundation. The transfer resistant update was inspired by research I did last year into polyamide 3. Polyamide 3 is the star ingredient in my clear lip gloss base formulation and I've been having a ton of fun playing with it and its cousin polyamide 8 in all kinds of cosmetic formulations. At the start of this year, I tried a riff on that 2020 formulation as a patron exclusive. That proof of concept try worked really well, so I kept working on the formulation and tweaking it, and now here we are. I like to apply this foundation with my fingers, just patting it out to blend. It isn't completely transfer proof, but it's definitely transfer resistant and wears really well all day. Here's the makeup right after application. Here it is after seven hours. Here it is after 10 hours, and this last checkup is after 12 hours. The test day was a fairly busy one with quite a few things rubbing on my face like scarves and high collars of winter coat, so there's definitely lots of opportunity for the makeup to rub off. Something else I love about this makeup is how it just melts into the skin and is quite invisible, even at really close range. I've applied quite a lot of foundation to my under eye area in this shot, but I don't think it's obvious at all. The first ingredient that you'll need for this formulation is 2.5 grams of your mineral makeup blend. I teach you how to make your very own custom blended mineral makeup in my book, Make It Up, The Essential Guide to DIY Makeup and Skin Care. There's a base formulation, seven different starter color blends, and then an entire double page spread of tips and tricks on color blending to help you absolutely nail your foundation. The blend that I use now is a slight variation on the Marie color blend in the book as I have improved my sunscreen game since writing the book. After the 2.5 grams of your mineral makeup powder, we need some wet things. The wet liquidy things in question are 1.175 grams of light, slippy C12 to 15 alkyl benzoate, though you could use isopropyl myristate instead, and one gram of rich castor oil. Castor oil is definitely kind of a surprising thing to include in foundation, but it's in that RCMA original, and I have been wearing that foundation and this modified version for, well, years for the original and months for this modified version, and it hasn't caused any breakouts or anything, so roll with it. 0.05 grams or just 1% of silica dimethyl ciliate helps improve the appearance of the skin and prevent the foundation from settling into fine lines. Make sure you are wearing a well-fitting dust mask when you are working with silica dimethyl ciliate as it is very floaty and easy to inhale. And then our last ingredient is our hardener and our film former, the oh so wonderful polyamide 3. Polyamide 3 is a super cool thickening gelling film forming ingredient. For the purposes of this formulation, I am really excited about the ability of polyamide 3 to bring film forming and transfer resisting abilities to a formulation without that formulation being volatile. I use the polyamide 3 from TKB Trading, and it is important that it's that one. Making Cosmetics also sells a polyamide 3, but despite the identical inkies, they are actually different products and they work differently. I think it could work, but I have not tried it myself. You can learn more about polyamide 3, and there are actually three different products with that inky that function differently in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia, so I'll link to that in the description box below and in the partner blog post. This foundation isn't hard to make, but it's definitely a bit tricky. Start by combining all of the ingredients in a small beaker. I recommend choosing a beaker that you don't mind having out of circulation for a couple weeks because you will not be able to get all of the foundation out of it. And if you're anything like me, you will then end up applying your foundation out of the beaker until it's all gone. Stir everything together as best you can. It will be thick and pasty and not very promising looking, but this is okay. Up next, we need to melt it and this is where things get a bit tricky. Since it's a cream foundation, it needs to be liquid for long enough that we can you know, really stir everything together, get that polyamide three nice and dispersed. And then, you know, so we can pour it 
into the pan. However, it is also made of 51% of powders that will not melt, and that really limits just how liquidy the product could ever be. That limited liquidiness is then further complicated by the high melting point of polyamide free, which is right around 100 degrees Celsius or 220 degrees Fahrenheit. This high melting point means that this foundation goes from ooh, liquid to like, ah, no, stop solidifying really, really quickly. And then add one more complication of our small batch size of five grams. It can be tempting to scale this formulation up to reduce that challenge, but I don't really recommend doing that because five grams is a ton of foundation. I've been using the five gram batch of foundation that I made over two years ago pretty diligently and I've used maybe half of it. So unless you have a couple friends that have exactly your skin tone, I do recommend sticking to that five gram batch size or you will just be throwing foundation out in like seven years when you're still not done it and it goes rancid. Anywho, the gist of the trickiness is that we need to melt everything, stir it together, and then get as much of the foundation out of the beaker and into the pan before it turns into a solid mass. You will absolutely need to heat this formulation over direct heat. Trying to melt polyamide 3 in a water bath is an exercise in futility. If you have a glass top stove, you can just pop your beaker right on top of the glass top and then turn the burner onto very low heat and wait. If you don't have a glass top stove, you can pop the beaker on a baking sheet and pop that in your oven and set your oven to just over 100 degrees Celsius or 220 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be tempting to really crank the temperature to melt everything faster, but you can absolutely burn this, so please resist the temptation. It's really helpful to preheat your pan as well so that the makeup doesn't just freeze as soon as it touches that cold metal. So you can pop your pan you know, on the baking sheet or on the burner so that it is toasty toasty. Here you can see an earlier batch of this makeup that I poured into a cold pan and how that didn't work out terribly well. Thankfully you can fix this by gently warming the pan of makeup on the top of your glass top stove or your hot plate if you have one. Don't let it get too hot or it will start to separate a little bit but thanks to the high solids content of this makeup it is fairly forgiving. Please only do this if you're using a standalone pan though. If you're using a pan that's part of a plastic housing please don't put it in the oven or on the stove because yeah, your smoke alarm will go off. Once the polyamide three has melted and you can stir everything together, stir, 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 scrape it into your pan. I'm pouring my makeup into a 36 millimeter round tin pan from TKB Trading. And then you'll remove everything from the heat and let the makeup set up. And that's it. As you can see, it's really not hard. It's just a little bit tricky. My magnetic palettes were purchased from Salt New York and the square colors that you see are their Creme Tint Pro products, which are really lovely. If you'd like to learn even more about this formulation, please make sure you're reading the full partner blog post for it linked in the description box below. If you'd like to learn even more about creating your very own makeup at home, please click here to check out my book. And if you'd like to learn how to make some gorgeous cream eyeshadow, click here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.